Hi everybody, welcome to the Matt Weston 365 YouTube channel. Today, something slightly different. I'm not going to tackle a technical issue per se. I'm going to more tackle the mindset that you can get into in order to help you create your flows in the first place. So this is just a little bit of a step away from the technical sessions that I normally do. And the reason for this is because I received some really valuable feedback that there's a lot of videos out there that really tackle how to use the technology or how to use the technology for a specific, uh, a specific problem. But there weren't really that many videos out there to help people actually get started in the first place. Not so much from how to use the technology, but how to apply a mindset and how to approach creating a flow. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how I generally approach creating flows and I break it down into five steps. So we'll go and have a look at that. So let's talk about learning how to flow. The first thing that I'll say is, and you'll see this as I talk through my, uh, my various steps, is don't try and be a hero. Don't try and tackle everything all in one go. Remember, you can break things down. A large problem is just a number of small problems. So if you even approach your, your flows like that, then you really can't go far wrong. So how do I approach my flows? What I do is I break it down into five quite simple to follow steps. The first is I'll draw the process. I'll then look at what are the services that I need to use in order to make this thing happen. I need to look at how I'm actually gonna start the flow. So what is the action or what is it that's gonna trigger everything off? I then break it down into sections. So again, small bite-sized pieces that I can uh, create and then test. And then that whole build, test and adjust piece, that iterative process that goes through from creating the basics that you need to then giving you that polished flow at the end of it. So step one, drawing the process. Now, those people that have worked with me in the past know that I always end up going to a whiteboard. I always end up firing up the whiteboard and app on my, on my laptop um, or even just drawing on a piece of paper. I like to draw the process. And when I draw the process, I don't just like to draw the key part that I'm looking at, I like the big picture. And what I've got on the screen here is an actual flow that I have been working on for a client. And what we can see here is that this is quite a complex flow of information going around different places. There are some parts that will be automated, some parts which will be manual. So the key thing to, for me to understand here is where is my flow going to actually sit within this process? And that's what I've highlighted there. So that's the key part that I'm gonna focus on for this scenario. So basically, the, an estate agent is gonna send some information through. The people who take the, uh, the call from the estate agents are going to call the tenants to go and uh, arrange a slot with them. Once they're happy with that, they will confirm it with the tenant. They'll confirm it with the estate agent who's raised it. And they'll also send a notification to the person who's potentially gonna go out and see, see that tenant. So that's the, the process we're gonna look at. So now that I've done that, let's start to look at how I can overlay my services on top of that process that we've got so far. Now, the, uh, the, my client has already started storing a lot of their information within SharePoint. So I know that my job information is there at the moment. And I'm going to stick with SharePoint. It could be CDS, it could be Excel, it could be anything else, but SharePoint's a good one to be able to illustrate this with. But what are the other um, what are the other services that I need to use? So when I create an appointment in a diary, effectively what I'm creating is an event or a calendar entry in an Outlook calendar. So I'm going to use the Outlook uh, service to then store that information. What am I going to do next? I'm going to send some emails. So again, I'm going to use the Outlook connector to then go and send those emails. But the send contractor, because they actually work for me, I can actually then look at doing something in a slightly different way. 
So I don't just need to use emails for them, I could actually send them a Teams message. So based on that, I've now identified that in my flow, I'm gonna have three different types of connectors. I'm gonna have SharePoint, I'm gonna have Outlook, and I'm gonna have Teams. So now that I've identified my services, I now need to decide how this is going to start. And where does my flow actually start? It starts right there. So it's the point where we've called to arrange the appointment with, a cust uh, with the, the tenant and we've agreed that. And I'm then going to put something into, um, uh, into an Outlook calendar. So what can I do for that? Well, all my information so far is stored within SharePoint. So it makes sense for me to maybe target a SharePoint connector there to um, pick the trigger that I want. And what I've got is I've got a number of potential triggers. So I've got when an item is created, when an item is created or updated, or for a selected item. So two of those are automatic. So the first two are classed as automatic triggers. So they will run as a result of me doing something in the list. For example, updating a field. But to be honest, what is probably more relevant here is that I actually want to put the information in and then once I've confirmed it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna physically go in and say, I'm now gonna send my, my reminders or my notifications. So I'm gonna use an instant trigger and I'm gonna use a for a selected item. So now I've identified my services, I, I, I have picked the trigger that I'm going to use. Let's now break the rest of my flow down into small parts that I can then start to develop. So the first part, if I look at the actions, uh, is to create a calendar entry. So it makes sense that that is my step one. Once I'm happy I've done that, I can then move on to step two, which is sending the emails. Now, because that's t they're both using the same type of action, I've classed that as one, st uh, as one step. And then my third one is once I've sent my emails, I can send my Teams message. So if I can break it down into chunks like that, that's gonna help me bite off small pieces uh, each time. It's gonna make the whole thing much easier. Then once I've done that, I can then start to build. I can test it. So each time we build something, we test it. We do the next part, we build it, we test it. And then as we go through, we can adjust it. And those adjustments could be adding the, the polish on, it could be adding in some various other bits and pieces that we'll see in a moment. It's taking it from being just the standard flow th through to being something that's a lot more production worthy. So let's build this flow. So I have a trigger, which is for a selected item. And as I said, step one is create an event. And so I've just used create an event uh, action from the Outlook connector. I then expand that out with my other section. So part two is then add the send an email v2 to the estate agent and to the tenant. Step three is add the post a message. So now I've got all the constituent parts. As I've added each part in, I've tested it. So I'm quite happy that all this is running through. And then I get to a point where I've now got my flow running. But I can then start to improve it. I can start to look at efficiencies. I can start to look at different ways of making this even better. That could be that rather than sending all of my messages sequentially, there's no reason why they can't go parallel. So I can actually bring in some parallel actions there. So my emails and my messages all go at exactly the same time, which can help to uh, reduce the amount of time that my flow actually runs for. What else can I do? I can bring in error handling. So I can start to add my scopes in, I can add my try, I can add my catch, I can send an email if something in my, uh, in my flow breaks. So all of these things just start to layer up on top of each other, but you need to get that uh, those basic parts first. You need to get your flow in place before you really start to look at all the polish that you can put on top. Make it work and then make it pretty. So as you can see, no, uh, whenever I approach a flow, I try not to complicate it. I try and follow those five steps each time. Uh, to the point where I've even wrote it, uh, drawn it out on a piece of paper, very rough, and I've just put Outlook, I've put SharePoint, CDS, whatever it might be, I've identified all the touch points that I need to reach out to other services. That makes it really clear because it means that I can automatically then focus on the connector and then focus on the actions that I need within those particular, uh, particular connectors to re really achieve what I want. 
And the, the key thing is small pieces. The testing functionality within Flow is absolutely spot on. So do something, test it. If it works, move on to the next piece. Just keep layering on. If you can build that really strong foundation, then you can start to add the polish on, you can start to layer up from there, and that will give you a fantastic flow to start working with. So I hope that's been useful just to give you an insight into the way that I approach my flows. Everybody is going to approach them slightly differently. And I hope that if, uh, if you are one of those people that has struggled with, how do I actually approach this? That following those five steps will actually give you the confidence to either find your own way or even apply that yourselves to help you go and create your own fantastic flows in the future. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to reach out on LinkedIn or on Twitter or even post a comment on the video below and I'll make sure that you get an answer. But until next time, take care and we'll speak again soon.